focusing on safety and security of students is going to be India's immediate concerns as Russian President Vladimir Putin has launched a military operation in Ukraine. Russian forces have launched a military assault on Ukraine, crossing its borders, bombing military targets near big cities. In a pre-dawn TV statement, Russian President Vladimir Putin said Russia did not plan to occupy, still reiterates that Russia did not plan to occupy Ukraine and demanded its military to lay down their arms. Moments later, attacks were reported on Ukrainian military targets. Ukraine said that Putin has launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Russian military vehicles were said to have breached the border in a number of places in north, south and east, including Belarus. Eight, at least eight people have been killed by Russian shelling so far. President Vladimir Zelensky has also announced that martial law was now being imposed across all of Ukraine. These are the streets of Ukraine. This is what is happening currently on the streets of Ukraine. As you can see, the streets here are choked. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky had announced that martial law was now being imposed across all of Ukraine. You can see the streets here. They're completely choked. Traffic has come to a standstill in Ukraine. This as a Russian forces launched a military assault on Ukraine and a Russian President Vladimir Putin said that Russia did not plan to occupy Ukraine but has demanded that its military lay down arms completely and you can see there is more of panic in Ukraine currently. These are, this is what is happening on the streets currently. The Ukrainian military death toll from the Russian invasion rose to three according to the Border Guard Service. The Russian armed forces are trying to invade Ukraine from several directions using rocket systems, helicopters to attack Ukrainian position in the south. Meanwhile, the head of the Ukrainian military has said that he had received orders from President Vladimir Zelensky to repel Russian invasion. Zelensky has given orders to inflict maximum losses against the aggressor. These uh, the visuals on your screens are from Ukraine. You can see the traffic is coming to a standstill here. This as Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky imposed martial law all across Ukraine. Also, once again, a Ukrainian military death toll from the Russian invasion has risen to three. According to the Border Guard Service, the Russian armed forces are trying to invade Ukraine from several directions using rocket systems and helicopters to attack Ukrainian position in the south. Invasion of Ukraine. Peaceful Ukrainian cities are under strike. This is a war of aggression. Ukraine will defend itself and will win. The world can and must stop Putin. The time now, the time to act is now. It's official statement of our foreign minister. Some additional information you can find on the Facebook of the embassy. Uh, it's a case of blatant aggression, which started at 5 o'clock in the morning. Firstly, reports were contradictory. But now we, we have confirmed information that a lot of Ukrainian aerodromes, military airports, military installations were attacked by bombs and missile attacks. Some attacks happened on the outskirts of the capital. Some attacks happened deeply inside the territory of Ukraine. We are getting the first information about casualties. Among our soldiers and among civilian population. The statement of the Russian Ministry of Defense was very cynical. We are attacking only military sites and military installations. But we have faced civilian casualties even on the outskirts 
of the capital. Mm -hmm. uh, there is fighting in some areas. According to the information of our Ministry of Defense, Ukrainian side shot down five Russian fighter planes, two helicopters, we destroyed two tanks and several trucks. Information is continuing to come. In spite of these assurances of the military, of the strikes on the military sites, there are reports that Russian troops are crossing the border. Uh, I have special case. The relatives of my wife live just 15 kilometers from the Russian border. border. Early in the morning, they were waken up by some explosions, explosions on the territory of Ukraine. In the border area, Russia attacked a lot of Ukrainian check posts and border posts. Ukraine already is in introducing the military state. We are starting mobilization of the reservists. Ukrainian army is not the army of 2014, when it was very much feeble, disorganized. After eight years, situation drastically and cardinally changed. Uh, Ukrainian people are not panicking. We are ready to defend our territory, territorial integrity, to de defend our towns and cities. And this information on the first casualties among invad invading troops is confirmation of this fact. This aggression, it was, it was not predicted by anyone. Sober-minded people could not expect it. Up to the last moment, the world was hoping for the peaceful solution. Up to the last moment, our president was repeatedly asking for bilateral negotiations with Russia. No response. Now we can see the clash of democratic country. Ukraine is like India, democratic country and totalitarian regime. Now <clears throat> I am ambassador to India. Of course, the position and the task of every ambassador is to make the position of the country of his state more favorable to our case. The special case is the India. You know that India is United, United Nations Security Council non-permanent member. India is very influential global player. I am dealing with India from my young student years. And I, I know a lot about the history of your diplomacy. You had such bright guys like Chanakya, or otherwise he, he is called Kautilya, approximately uh, 2,400 years back, when on the major part of Europe there was no civilization. And even those days you had qualified diplomacy. Let's go 
into your mythological stories. Just remember Mahabharata, which, according to some reports, the war happened in 3,102nd year before Christ. Even before Mahabharata war, there were active attempts of solving this conflict by peaceful means. Unfortunately, in Mahabharata case, it was not so successful, but I am hoping that in our case, it should be much more successful. Don't forget that India, for many years, was and still the leader of non-alignment movement. Non-alignment movement was created in the time of the Cold War just to prevent world tensions. It was based on the principles of peace. Don't forget that India was among architects of the world famous five principles, Panchashila. That's why at the present moment we are asking, pleading the support of India. India is the powerful global player. And in case of aggression, of totalitarian regime, against democratic state, India should fully assume its global role. Modiji is one of the most powerful and respected leaders of the world. You know that you have special privileged strategic partnership with Russia. I don't know how many world leaders Putin may listen to, but the status of Modi G makes me hopeful that in case of his strong voice, Putin at least should think over. We are expecting for much more favorable attitude of the Indian government in this crisis situation. It's the moment of truth, moment of destiny. I am following all the reports on the side of your ministry and the latest advisory to your citizens in Ukraine was just not to go out, not to go to Kiev, and recommendations and the statement of your Ministry of External Affairs was that India is closely following development of events. We are deeply dissatisfied with this position. What does it mean closely following or more closely? Now 10, 15 people are killed. When hundreds or thousands will be killed, in this case, what will happen? Is following more closely. We are waiting, we are asking, we are pleading for the strong voice of <coughs> India. In this case, uh, I think that in this case, your Prime Minister can address Mr. Putin. He can address our President. Many times in the history, India played peacekeeping role. You are among the first nations from the point of view of amount of peacekeepers, even of military casualties during peacekeeping operations. That's why peace-loving nation of India, we are asking 
for your strong voice to stop this war. I don't know what will happen in one hour, in two hours, after one day. Situation may get out of control. And in this case, it will not be, as some people are claiming, regional conflict. It will be the conflict involving the whole world. Uh, already, approximately 70 countries, geographically, starting from Guatemala and ending with Japan, already supported of Ukraine, expressed their support of Ukraine. We are most hopeful that the amount of these countries, including friendly ones, which every time we consider India, will further increase. Situation drastically changed. At present, we are not satisfied with protocol statements. Deep disappointment, deep concern, it matters nothing. First of all, we need absolute support from our friendly countries, from the whole world, just to stop this war. Ukraine is a peaceful nation. We are ready to fight, but peace is the best solution. We are asking every our partner about some kind of support, of assistance. I am not saying, I, I cannot dictate the terms. Which words should be? Which practical actions? Maybe oral, verbal condemnation, maybe some sanctions, maybe humanitarian or military assistance, whatever you like, maybe cancellation of bilateral events with Russia. It's not the proper time to hold some bilateral events. Hmm. There is a, now bilateral event is held only by your neighbor there. <laughs> And again, another issue. It's not uh, connected directly to me. It's connected to you. It's connected to Indians. Ukraine has got one of the biggest amounts of Indian students, more than 20,000. The well-being and safety of your citizens, it's also it's our task, but first of all, it's task of your government. Immediately, after the request of the Indian side, we abolished all the quotas uh, on the seats, on the flights, and everything. We tried to help. Now, unfortunately, airspace of Ukraine is... That was Ukraine Ambassador to India, Igor Polika, reiterating a Ukraine Foreign Minister's statements calling on allies also seeking India's intervention in this crisis.